Welcome aboard the Resolution. It's a 45-year-old oil drilling ship, but it's sailed most of its life as a science vessel. Its crew navigated to soft spots on the Earth's crust where rocks that should be hidden deep out of reach are pushed up by the movement of the planet's surface. In the middle of the Atlantic Ocean lies a mountain the size of Mont Blanc. There's no place closer to the Earth's mantle, the mysterious layer below the crust. It's called the Atlantic Massif, the Lost City. The scientists on board are studying these places where life may have begun. But here what's happened is we've, we've had this faulting close to the Mid-Ocean Ridge, which is kind of pulled like this. If you imagine my fingers of the mantle, they would be down there, but they get pulled out like this until they're on the surface. And we see the mantle and the lower crust. The only way we can reach, get to these by direct drilling is where there's a fault, because these rocks do not form on the seafloor. They find a borehole that was drilled years ago. Using tools that can operate at high temperatures without electronics, they drill and scoop up samples along the way. They pull out the core, lift it to the surface in long plastic tubes, and remove the chunks one by one. Then the science begins. They want to capture every detail from the millions of years of history that are embedded in each piece. So it's sliced, loaded onto conveyor belts, and photographed. So in the course of splits, uh, we can see uh, the inside of, uh, of the rocks and uh, we look for a couple of major things. The first is what rock types we see. So we look for variations in the minerals that we see, variations in the rock type. Because it's here, in the alchemy of the early ocean, where chemistry may have transformed into biology. When the greenish mineral olivine contacts seawater, it burns in a chemical reaction, creating new minerals and releasing gases through a process called serpentinization. Those gases, like hydrogen and methane, may have been fuel for the earliest forms of life. And understanding these reactions will give clues to so-called exobiologists who are looking for similar conditions under the icy oceans of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. There's people who are looking at this question of where that boundary is by looking at how life lives right now and trying to figure out what's common across all living domains and so what those earliest forms of life might have looked like. The resolution is likely retiring. Its annual U.S. government fund of $50 million is coming to an end. The samples it digs up will be stored in vaults for study in the years ahead. Colin Baker, Al Jazeera.